Hello there and welcome to the Hash Power Academy. This is your place to learn absolutely anything to do with Bitcoin. And we will be delving into some price projections today, going from today to 2028, the next halving, to the next halving after that in 2032. Now, many people ponder the idea of a million dollar Bitcoin looking at the uh, 2030 sort of time frame. But uh, before we look up, we need to look down. And one of the best ways to model out the uncertain future is to figure out what is certain, which is the halving is going to come and cut the amount of Bitcoin that miners earn in half. And the mining network is going to grow. So this is a projection. This is for certain. This is projection and projection of the computing network, the network hash rate and the efficiency of those computers going down because we want to be using less energy to produce more hash rate to earn some of that Bitcoin. And what this does is two things. It gives us the price projection of Bitcoin and supporting that production cost, which is found with how much miners are paying in electricity. And so, yeah, it all comes together as an interconnected energy money system, as Elon Musk has just alluded to. So, yeah, in this video, we're just going to delve through the uncertain parts with the certain aspect and give us a clear, sensible price projection. So bear with me, there'll be a bit of numbers, but it's all proof of work, whether it's the energy side or the learning side of things, shall we say. So the first place to start is there is 144 blocks distributed uh, per day found by the Bitcoin miners. And that, that distributes 450 Bitcoin of subsidy. Some of that freshly mined Bitcoin, the 21 million down to the last million to be mined, being distributed and cutting in half every four years. And where, where we calculate the mining revenue aspect of this, which helps us get that price projection, is 450 Bitcoin times by the price divided by the network hash rate. So it's essentially these two divided by that one. And that's really it but we need to delve a little bit more into details with this figure as well. So this figure gives us a value of 450 Bitcoin in dollar terms divided by the network hash rate. And this figure is exahashes, which is each one exahash of this total network hash rate of a thousand, one exahash, one is a million terahash. So I've got 10 to the 6 here to multiply this uh, denominator uh, down to a single terahash. Now, the best way to understand this figure is uh, 4.5 cents is what a single terahash is earning in Bitcoin per day in dollar terms. And a single terahash can be best understood as the compute that a Bitax mini miner, the, the smallest Bitax, is earning about four and a half cent of Bitcoin per day. And this is important for the next piece. But firstly, let's throw some price projection in there to give a support to the next round of figures. So actually, no, I'm gonna keep you on the edge. So let's just rub this out and write in the 0 0.045, 0 0.045. Now for this one, for this one, we're going to be nice and sensible and do a price projection of 200,000, which if we put 225 here, uh, 200,000, not $200, $200,000, uh, these two multiplied, divided by a network hash rate of 1,600. Now, this will give a figure of, I'm just going to write them in, let's just save time. This will give a figure of 0 0.028. $200,000 um, the, the $200, uh, times by 225 Bitcoin divided by 1600. So this is modeling a 60% increase in network hash rate, which boils down to more miners plugging in but also some miners may be unplugging machines and replacing them with later, more efficient machines. 
because the average efficiency of the network right now is 20. But there are new machines coming out now that are under 10 watts per terahash. So they're twice as efficient. So it's the same computer using the same amount of power, well, same, same computer in terms of size potentially, same amount of power, but producing twice as much hash rate. So there's a combination of the large miners plugging in machines that produce more hash rate with the same energy, but also those old machines are not just being switched, you know, thrown away. They're becoming heating systems, which is an entirely new area of Bitcoin that's really emerging now. Um, but the premise here is we'll get to this uh, third one, uh, 2032. Again, I'm going to be really sensible here and write a price projection of $400. $400,000. And the premise there is if we put 400 here, $400,000 here, and a network hash rate of 3,000 exahash, and the block rewards, the block rewards being uh, half, 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 but with the quantity, I'm showing you the dollar value here of 112.5. This gives us a figure of yeah, 112.5 Bitcoin distributed daily to the entire network of 3,000 exahash at a $400,000 price is, I believe, uh, one and a half cent, 0.15. Now to miners, the idea of a hash price going from four and a half right now, four and a half cent to 2.8 cent to a figure of one and a half cent, that is danger zone. But uh, the next step gets quite interesting, which is uh, one of the key takeaways, I think, from this educational journey is these markets of the commodity costs to produce Bitcoin and the technologies involved, such as solar panels, producing electricity, consumed by Bitcoin miners to produce hash rate, consumed to add Bitcoin blocks to the chain. And one ter this is the figure of one terahash at a price of 100,000 in 2025. If the facts and figures of certainty of the halvings coming along, the network growing, the efficiency of the computers decreasing in the energy cost per terahash, we can start modeling uh, the next layer, which is the electric cost. This is more interesting to the people getting into Bitcoin mining or already mining. So it boils down to this, a kilowatt. How much, what is the revenue per kilowatt, the production cost, the, the energy exchange rate of Bitcoin? which we do a kilowatt, which is a thousand watts. Let's just keep this all color coded. A thousand watts, thousand watts divided by efficiency. Because if you're running a computer, it's consuming three, four kilowatts, but we'll just divide it to a kilowatt to keep it specific to energy, which is if your machine converts 20 watts into a single terahash, we divide by efficiency. So the machine here is 20 watts and the, these two cancel out uh, watts per terahash. So it's just leaving the, the terahash figure. Um, and then we're going to multiply. So it's, this, this gives you a figure of, uh, I'm going to get lost here. Or maybe you're going to get lost here, but I'll give you just easy numbers afterwards. So efficiency of the computer consuming a kilowatt at 20 watts per terahash multiplied by how much a single terahash, this is showing you the terahash per kilowatt, multiplied by hash price, I'm just going to write hash price, hash price over 24, because remember this is per day, so if we divide it by 144, and in nice easy figures, I've already prepared them like a good cooking show is 0 
for these figures, it's 1,000 divided by 15 times by hash price divided by, oh, sorry, that's not that figure, that's 24. <laughs> um, 0 0.093, so that's the amount of Bitcoin per kilowatt hour that miners are earning. So if you're only earning 9.3 cent per kilowatt hour or $93 per megawatt hour, you want to be buying your power below this rate. For these figures, that's the thousand divided by 10 times by 2.8 cent over 24 hours, you are earning 0 0.078, which is about the hosting rates. So every hosted miner, you should be, if you're in mining, ask your hosted mining uh, company, what is their plan for the halving? Because if your efficiency of machines is above 15, you're on a timer. If the price is at 200,000, if it's higher than that, great. If it's lower than that, bigger problems. And then the other figure here is 0 .0, 0 0.062. Remember, these are the amount of Bitcoin you're earning per kilowatt. And um, the, let's talk about these figures. So today, the average of the network in miners are earning 9, 9.3 cent per kilowatt hour rough at $100,000. With the network growing, the amount of Bitcoin earned, the price going up, miners are earning 7.8 cent per kilowatt hour. And this is about a standard hosted mining rate at the retail level. So if you're buying power at four cent or below, you're getting that two to one ratio that you really need. So basically, if a majority of the network are close to five to eight cents, this is a very sensible price. If it's higher than that, amazing. Mining is in profit. If it's closer to production, it does represent a very good time to be buying Bitcoin. Because I've, I've said this in previous, previous videos. If you could be buying Bitcoin with dollars at the same rate or close to the miners that produce it, Imagine, imagine buying corn at the same price that the, the farmer grows it. That You can't get a better price, market price than that. And then it starts getting into danger territory if the network grows to 3,000 exahash at a $400,000 Bitcoin price and uh, mining needs to be under 6.2 cent per kilowatt hour. So to be making a two to one, you need an electrical rate of three cent. And why I have shown these efficiency figures gets interesting as well, because even today, uh, going into 2026, uh, there are machines coming out with this efficiency. With this efficiency, this figure doubles, because remember you're getting a thousand, dividing it by this efficiency. So you're getting your uh, terahash per kilowatt as a quantity. A thousand divided by 10 is you're getting a hundred terahash per one kilowatt. So a hundred times this figure divided by 24, you'd have double roughly. And so mining has all these interplays between the efficiency of the machines, fighting others on the network for your share of the, the amount of blocks and Bitcoin rewards distributed per day. And this hash price of the amount of Bitcoin per terahash per day is going to drop. The scarcity of Bitcoin is also represented in those that produce it. Because I always say there's infinitely more energy and compute chasing Bitcoin, not just dollars chasing Bitcoin. But what seems to drive the profitability of mining is the death of the dollar. The continual expansion of the dollar um, reprices everything higher. And miners are more locked in energy-based contracts. So they're sort of locking in this uh, lockstep uh, cost of energy going up in dollar terms. But what this is doing is even at this network efficiency, uh, in 2028, we potentially, potentially could see machines as low as five watts per terahash. So if we get machines of five watts per terahash in 2028, this figure will be three times as much for those machines but the machines you can expect to be three to five times more expensive. Because there's all these interplays between the price of the machine and the efficiency of the machines. 
uh, like the comparison I always use of the latest iPhone being expensive, but as the new one comes out, the, the older ones get cheaper and cheaper because there's a, a price, there's a comparison to old and new and faster chips, more storage and all these sorts of uh, compute based things. Um, but where these efficiencies get interesting as an average is that this sits as an average in a polarized world of mining, which is there's, this, there's the mining that is shifting more and more off grid, chasing cheaper power down to one cent per kilowatt hour. Uh, natural gas for individuals, it's more solar, solar mining. If you have your own house and land, solar panels, battery, you've got the best opportunity to mine. But if the network average starts earning less than eight cent, that wipes out that wipes out hosted mining and anything less, anything, exp any hosted mining that offers rates of eight cent down to six, well, it's going to be at a threat looking uh, three, three to seven years ahead in time. But here's the thing, if, if these, these electrical prices set a very sensible baseline price projection, you're still looking at, you know, a 400% return over just that seven years. So 400% return, 400% uh, or 300% of growth over seven years, that is, well, significant. And if this was to jump to a million, well, this would be uh, two and a half times bigger and mining sustains profitability for probably the majority of the network of 15 joules per terahash and below. Whew. Thank you for listening. I hope you enjoyed. If you've watched this far, congratulations. You are definitely in the Bitcoin bubble. And these sorts of information give you the advantage over everyone else that may have dropped off this video. Please, please consider like, share, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Send this to the group chat you think that will appreciate it. And I will see you in the next video. Goodbye.